Tang Gang, baby, man. What's real? It's your girl Tang Gang, baby. What's real? It's your girl Tang Gang, baby. But first things first. Okay. Who are you? Who am I? Well, I'm originally government named Lanice Wilkes. Um, but everybody who knows me from the projects or just like high school or just like, you know, in the streets, I'm Woo. Yeah, that's me. Hey, and where are you originally from? Originally, I'm from Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I'm from the city of Pittsburgh. Uh, I'm from the streets of The Hill. That's a project. Well, The Hill ain't really just projects. I, it's The Hill District. I was raised in a project as a Chauncey Drive and Summers Drive up until 12 years old. Then around like in my 12 years of living all the way to 18, I was raised in the streets of Hazelwood. So, so how was that for you? So for me growing up in the projects, it was kind of hard. It was kind of difficult. I ain't gonna lie. Um, I believe my skin color had a lot to do with it. A lot of the times, like the higher yellow motherfuckers get picked on a lot. I guess they try to, I don't know, is light skin considered weak? I'm not sure. In my mind, like, you know, I just felt like I got tried up by a lot of people in my peers. So I always had to, you know, kind of put on this this extra gear to, you know, protect myself and protect my energy as a kid. But other than that, man, I was real well-rounded. I knew everybody. I went to every hood. There was nowhere that I couldn't go. A lot of people know me up the way, man, and I'm good everywhere. So, you know, I guess my personality just took me a long way through them streets, you know what I'm saying? Forward. When did you get to Atlanta, Georgia? So uh, I dropped out in high school um, in the ninth grade. I flunked twice in my life, it's horrible. Anyway, I flunked ninth grade, so I had to repeat. So just knowing that I had already flunked fifth grade in the past, it just was, the age was gonna be stupid to me. I went to Job Corps. I went for culinary arts and then I went for uh, my GED. I graduated from culinary arts school and got my GED in 2008, called my daddy. He was located in Atlanta. He was located in the North Cross. Let me let me clarify that because like the North side, the South side, East side, the West side and Atlanta is all different areas. You hear what I'm saying? So when I got to North side, <laughs> I got down here in 2008, early 2009. Um, and I went to Le Cordon Bleu to start my cook career as I thought, you know what I'm saying? Tell me about the transition from cooking being a chef to podcaster, media princess, media queen, right? Media queen. Uh, I don't know, man. I mean, it's the same thing. Cooking in the kitchen and cooking outside in the streets is damn near the same thing. And what I mean by that is, like, it's a skilled trait. You know, they teach you, they teach you class to be disciplined, you know, clean and groomed and hygiene and things like that. So you can cook and prepare great food. And I feel like as far as the media goes, it's the same thing. You gotta be well groomed, kept up, you know what I'm saying? Real poised and positioned for the positions of the industry because it's, it's like rules to the game everywhere. So I wouldn't say like the kitchen is different from the media. It's all the same thing. It's all about how you approach the situation if you ask me. So how do you approach this situation? Man, like a boss, pimp. Come on, G. <laughs> you already know me. So, what would you say separates you from other podcasts? What separates me from other podcasts is I'm not just a podcast, and a podcast isn't just a podcast for me. It's actually a lifestyle. You know, we like walking legends. Me and my boy meet me in the city. Thank God for him behind the camera all the time. You know, he's be able to get the creative side of what we do. We out here paving the street. This is bigger than MTV, BET, VH1, all types of stuff, because we all are in the area of what's going on. And I'm like a news reporter, and then I'm gonna take them that news and I'm gonna bring it back to the podcast. And then I got so many people that I'm around and I'm constantly rubbing elbows. So it's not just like a podcast, it's more like a, a union or a, or a membership. And we taking it as a podcast, but the whole thing is the media, it's TV. We giving it to you straight like that and then it's raw, it's no anesthetics, it's no nothing that, you know, everything that you see from what's real podcast, TV and media is like 100% authentic. So you said lifestyle. Right. 
So what is your lifestyle? Being a woman, a transparent woman. Um, I'm a mother of five. I'm a sister. I'm a daughter. I'm an aunt. You know what I'm saying? There's so many life forms that I have to take care of that's around me. You know what I'm saying? Who so, inspires you? Uh, you know, that's a great question. For a long time, you know, I would have said my mom, she's inspiring and, you know, my whole family. But to me, what inspires me is to see other people and how they react to situations that I'm putting in and, and the outcome that they get out of it. That's real inspiring to me when people be like, man, you doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? Or, hey, I seen you in that video. Or calling me from out of town. Hey, you was on Love and Hip Hop. Shit like that. You know what I'm saying? That's inspiring. Me inspiring others, that's inspiring. I like that. I really need to be a motivational speaker. I'm really talking for free too much, you know what I'm saying? But I feel like, you know, I'm just putting in the work and exercising my gift until it's time for that payment. Is motivational speaking in your near future? Correct. So what does that look like? Uh, a group of people out in the audience sucking up the game for me and really taking it and putting it out there and getting something from it. Value. You're able to add value. Yeah, straight up. And then they add value to my pockets because they got to pay for the seminars. So I'm just saying it's like it's, it's an even exchange. Yeah. I'm learning the game. Pimps, tap in. All the pimps. <laughs> Everybody pushing P, man, tap in. <laughs> what is what's real? What is what's real? What's real, man, is that. What's real? When you ask a person what's real, you get a, a thousand definitions what's real to them. You know what I'm saying? And then I decipher if that's real, and then yeah, you come on the show. That's what's real. I don't care about your jewelry. I don't care about your money. I don't. I, it's all about in your head with this work like, and then how that's processed and how it comes out of this. You know, because at the end of the day, we we want to enlighten and heighten our people. You know, a lot of people be like, oh, you know, you could be talking about this and get, nah, I'm good, pimp. But what's real is the real deal. And that's how I feel. And anytime I log on to what's real and I give you content, I'm, bro, it's real. It's going to be real. And I'm sitting down with some of the realest people on the planet. Tell me about some of the topics we'll hear on your show. Uh, really just free, open-range conversations. I, I don't believe in topics for real. Really, we just talk about, like, what flows good for you. Like, we could talk about some topic-ass shit that's trending right now, but it's only trending for that moment. Like, who are you? What's real? What do you add value to? So I'm really interested in your lifestyle, for real, for real. So them would be topics. And then if we have some shit that you might want to talk about other than what we talk about, shit, you could make that a topic. So what are your listeners like? What, what are they? My listeners is in the industry with me. They out paving the concrete with me. I see them all the time when I'm out. I feel like they are my biggest supporter. What's real ain't really catched on yet, and it's okay. You know, we only, this is my third year into the business. I'm not expecting me to be shared with all this and all that. And I'm glad it's taking the, the natural toll that it's taking because I don't want no rushed audience. I want them to be able to look back and be like, man, she been doing this shit. You know what I'm saying? Because when I pop, they're going to be like, man, she just popped out of nowhere. Nah, bitch. Excuse me. Pee. Nah, pimp. It don't work like that. I took three good years out of my life to invest it into this what's real podcast, media, and t television dream. We in the school right now. This is film 120. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is us doing this in the flesh. So, yeah, it's going to take time. But as time progresses, I know what's real is in the near future of being a million dollar brand. Where you get your confidence from? Ooh, I don't know, man. My mom was a cocky motherfucker growing up. Like, she used to tell me she could take the people's niggas and all type of shit, bro. This is real rap, no cap, right? And, you know, just seeing that level of confidence, like, she always walked with her best foot forward. And I just feel like I get that trait from her, you know what I'm saying? Then my dad, he don't hold his tongue either. Uh, that's a spicy talking ass nigga too so it's just like you know when you come from two lit flames you ain't got no choice but to be a light i feel like i really gained confidence when i came out and told everybody I was gay because it was no more hat and nothing it's just me being who i am so with that being said i feel like my confidence comes from my mom and my dad and me coming out the closet no cap did you find strength coming out of the closet yes i did Yes, I did. I did not want to be 50, 60 years old, lying to myself, my kids, and everybody else. So 
So yeah, I feel like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders. How has this furthered your, the identity of your brand? Because it's open, it's transfluent. You know, you're able to be comfortable, be who you are, there's no judgment here. I feel like when you are who you are, whether it's heterosexual, bisexual, or just who you are, it don't matter. As long as you true to who you are, everything that you touch will be true too. So it's just like, stay true to yourself. Do what you have to do to be comfortable so you can be the best you that prevails. You know what I'm saying? Mm, I like that. So what type of content do you watch? Uh, I like documentaries. I definitely like documentaries. Um, I like documentaries on hip hop music elevation. I like documentaries on how people got started, especially like like Kanye West type shit. You know what I'm saying? Like how he was just an average fucking joke and he was going through the hallways playing his fucking music, telling these folks, I'm gonna be a star. And I'm like watching that shit and now to see where he at today, and it just gets my blood going. Cause I be like, nigga, that's me. That's how I be acting. I be all through the whole time, like, what's real? What's your girl Tang game? Blah, blah, blah. And this is like, people might be like, damn, that's a little bit obnoxious or that's a little bit aggressive or, but that's how Kanye was, man. And, and he just gave me light. So it's just like those type of documentaries from nothing to something is like my all time favorite content. I so I, I heard that you used to make music. Most definitely inspired from my family. My family got a real big music his, history background. Down to my great uncles, like being in, in the music industry and stuff. My mom sang, my sister used to rap. So it's just like music been a big part of my life ever since I was like the age of eight. You know what I'm saying? So that, having that knowledge and that history in music, not only that, but just tied in with me being so compatible with conversation towards people. Like, that's why it was just perfect for me to be an interviewer. Because it's like, I know music. I know what's real. I know bars, bro. Can't, can't play a pimp, man. I keep trying to tell these motherfuckers, you cannot play a pimp. Do you have any, do you have any goals to reignite your passion for music? Mm, I fuck with it, you know. Like the intro that you hear, those beats were made by me. I make all my beats from scratch. The intros and shit, all that was written by me. So, you know, I play with it. I play for, with it for what it's worth. Me wanting to be a rap star, no. Me wanting a little fame on it, you like, oh, she do got bars, that's all right, I'll take that. But I don't want to be uncomfortably like, famous, you know what I'm saying? So what, what legacy are you leaving for your children? Oh man, they're gonna be able to do so much in this world, man, so much to offer. If you Google my name right now, Lanice Wilkes, L-Y-N-I-E-C-E-W-I-L-K-E-S, you will find so many great things about me. That's my legacy. And I want my grandchildren and children's children to be inspired by what I did. You know what I'm saying? So I'm laying that foundation right now as we speak. So I ain't got to worry about all that extra shit when it's time to go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just to all the grandbabies. Grandma, love you. Gigi, love you. Gigi. <laughs> all right. So in conclusion, mm. what can we see from you in these next 12 months? These next 12 months is definitely more celebrity content. I mean, we got that in the box. And me just connecting and making better relationships with all the influencers and content creators with YouTube, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, um, TikTok. So you're going to definitely see me just, you know, engaging more into that field and uh, lots of content, man. I'm in film school, lots of content. This is content and we're going to run these numbers up. And I just ask really for y'all to support what's real and what's real will support the community back by giving y'all nothing but the real. Yeah, it is. That's real. Any shout outs? Any shout outs, man. Shout out to my mom and my dad. I love y'all. Shout out to my kids, Kena, Bray, Marva, India, and Jay. I love my babies. Shout out to Meet Me in the City, man, for always putting me in the best fucking position and be great. Shout out to all my mentors and all my spirit guys and spirit angels. Shout out to my ancestors. Shout out to God. Jesus Christ, Lord and Savior. Shout out to everything that leads me into the right direction, man. In the physical and in the spiritual. I love y'all. For more content like this one, y'all tune in to What's Real streaming everywhere. That's W-U-T-Z, 
R E A L. You type that in, you can find me on all social sites. More like YouTube, though. We really want to get those numbers up. And I really want to start, you know, generating more content for y'all. So y'all stay in my DM, stay in my inbox. Y'all can email me. All the links in the descriptions is down below right here. So y'all go ahead and do that. And then um, in the meantime, yeah, it's your girl Tang Gang, baby. With What's Real Podcast, What's Real Media, What's Real TV, What's Real All in Your Mouth, NT, man. We coming, baby. We coming. Let's go.